Hey, my creative friends. Today we are going to paint these gorgeous echinacea blooms that are purpley, pinkish, and I'm going to use the reference from the flower color guide. So um, let's dive right in. So today we are going to paint this beautiful echinacea pinkish purpley flower from this book, The Flower Color Guide, which is all over YouTube, of course, but um, uh, why not? It's just such a beautiful book. And what I love about this reference is that it has the echinacea pointing in different directions. And also there's different intensity of the purpleness and yeah, all the different heights. Everything is so much to love about this picture. So I'm going to just set this aside and also today I'm going to try this Medine watercolor 100% cotton paper that they have sent me um, so kindly. And I also found out it's actually the same as Baohong, as in Academy Watercolor Paper Pad and Medine, they're like sister, sister companies. So it's actually the same paper I was told. So let's get this open and I can actually try it out and tell you whether it's really the same. Okay, so let's see. Let's check this out. Very similar to Academy and when you open it. All right, I'll just put the Academy one aside and then I'll need a little, um, what do you call, remover thing. It comes with this cute little remover a leaf shape thing, but you can use a palette knife or a butter knife. Just removing that first sheet that protects the paper. And already I am just looking at how it feels. It's very, very similar to Academy Baohong, which I am very comfortable and enjoy that very much. All right, the other thing I'm going to use today is this really cute porcelain brush bowl from Medin that they have sent me as well. And I think it comes in a set, a watercolor, a 20, um, a watercolor set that comes with paints and brushes and also the paper. So I will try to paint another day, but for today, I'm going to use this very cute, like a um, double cup porcelain cup holder instead of my usual water glass. And I usually prefer to use a transparent glass like this so I can see how muddy the water gets, but we'll see how this goes. All right, so let me go fill this up with water. So for this painting, once again, I am just gonna probably use my size six round uh, Princeton Heritage brush and use whatever round brush you have. I'm gonna do a very simple, simple painting, show you how to just really look at the, the painting and just follow almost exactly. Getting my burnt umber, a nice dark burnt umber. And if you feel that that's not dark enough, you can add a bit of dioxazine purple to get it to go a bit darker. We're gonna start with this flower here. So just creating a little ball there, and then maybe one here. Simple ball shape. And if you study the reference, you notice that the top is actually lighter. So what I did is I washed off the pigment of the brush, dried it, and I'm lifting some of that pigment up from the top of this middle stamen bit of the flower. Okay, so that it just creates a little like a highlight at the top. Whoops. Okay. So not too wet, not too puddly. Let's go on to do the petals. So grab whatever purple you have, or you can make your own purple mix by maybe a bit of permanent rose with a cobalt blue. That's how I like to get some of my purple mix sometimes. All right, so not too wet. Let's pull out some first few petals here. Just pointing your brush to the middle of the stamen and pull out some nice deep petals. Okay, make a darker pool. And mix some of the petals 
lighter and some of the petals darker. So what I did there is I went to mix some dioxazine purple in it, so it's creating more of a darker purple there. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush completely off, so it's just water now. And it's going in between, or slightly touching this petal here, and just have a bit of bumpy bump going on so that you can have a bit of bleed. Beautiful. Now, let's do one in the middle here. Okay. Now, while it's still a bit wet, maybe we can darken this parts, all right? So going back in with my Burnt Umber and Dioxazine Purple Mix, a really dark mix. I'm just gonna touch these parts here where it's the start of the petal that bleeds into the middle stamen. And I'm happy with that. Let's move on to this other one here. So same mix. Choose a light or dark consistency and just begin to pull out some petals. Making some fatter and some thinner. Some darker and some lighter. Okay. Oh, that was really dark. It's okay. Just rescuing it a little bit. I'm feeling it's very purplish now, so I want to go into my permanent rose to make to bring the pink, bring it back to a pink, pinky hue. Okay. And then same, get my burnt umber dioxazine purple mix to just. Ooh. That was a bit dark. All right, rescue, rescue. See, I didn't really control the amount of water at that point, so it's just got a bit, bit gloopy. But it's okay, you can rescue a bit by just wiping the paint and pigment away and just sort of wiping some of that up. Okay, we can go in and fix it up a bit later. Just leave it for now. Okay, don't worry, you've got many, many echinaceas here to practice, all right? So if one is a fail, don't worry, we can just keep going and it will get better the next time round because it's all about practice. Let's do this one here and I'm just going to place that middle bit here using that same dark mix of burnt umber and dioxazine purple. Same deal, try to lift the top of it up so I get a bit of a highlight. And these petals now are super light, super, super light. So what I'll do is I'll just grab that pink permanent rose with lots of water and I am going to really lightly touch the middle to pull out some of these petals. Remembering you want to vary the values and the hues of each flower so that there's interest in the page and I really love how this one is coming out already. See some of the middle is really bleeding quite profusely into the into the petals and you either the next time you don't like that you can wait a little bit longer before you do the petals or just live with it and see how that turns out all right you will learn through every single painting that you create. All right, let's keep going and build more of these flowers. So just one here. All right. I am already feeling a little impatience growing inside. So I'm gonna go a bit faster and just make the other three down here. And I'm just even gonna do what, the one that's on top here, which is a flatter top is facing upwards. Very, very tiny petals. Okay. So now I've, I've learned from this one that I wanna wait a while before I do the petals. So let's start on some of the stems. So going into my sap green, and I'm making a sap green puddle here with all this leftover purples and blues so that I can actually get a nice neutral green. If you're not happy with this, you can also you know, add a bit of green gold. And there we go. I'm gonna pull this first stem down and let it touch and bleed into the other. 
Don't worry about the stems not being straight or broken looking. No one's gonna stare at your stem and think like, oh my god. Okay, so I've got some stems and I think now is probably a good time to put some petals, all right? So with those florals, timing is one of those things where um, it's quite important because you want to take advantage of wet and wet opportunities, but then we don't want to, it to be too, too bleedy, too wet as well. So it's, for me, I am an impatient person, so I tend to uh, not wait so much. Um, learning, learning my best to be more patient. Okay, I'm noticing some of these um, echinacea had these really scruffy, cute, thin petals. So I'm taking advantage of, of that and trying to, to do that as well. And some of them are, you know, the petals are not even pink. They're actually a green. So this one here, just using a bit of green mixed with a bit of that pink. All right. All right. And then this one up here is also like a pinky green. And because it's facing upwards, it's just got to use your reference and do what that makes sense all right so I'm gonna add one more just one more flower here using my dark mix once again and this one is gonna be also very sparsely petaled um, I'm gonna wait a bit for that one let's put some leaves down so getting a fun leaf mix and just pulling out some leaves grabbing a bit of that blue bit of Prussian to create some differences playing around with the different hues oh wait this fella does not have a stem so let's bring a stem down for you and maybe a stem down for you it feels weird and uncomfortable to not have all the stems. A little leaf here, a little leaf there. You have some leaves lighter. And I know it's tricky to like put leaves in between flowers you've already painted. And you might feel not confident to, to put leaves in front of, behind. And I get it, you know, I, I, I was once also really scared to do those things. Um, the only advice I can give you is haha, just to do it. Just do it. Don't worry about making mistakes because you will make mistakes, okay? You will. You will. It's inevitable. You just got to accept that mistakes will be made. And that's totally fine because we are human beings. We're not robots. All right, now I'm gonna just fill in the this one here. Okay. And I'm just, I'm just being very, very forgiving to myself of um, lots of places where I feel like, oh, it's not really exactly how I would like it to be, especially at this stage now where a lot of the bleeds have just happened. But I think at this point, I'm going to just, hang on. I'm just gonna actually drop in some darker blues. Oh, by the way, this paper is behaving exactly like Bai Hong, all right, Academy. So I'm pretty happy with it so far. I think at this point, we are going to wait and then come back and we'll do some details to just bring this to life a little bit more. Let's get into the details now, shall we? I'm gonna swap to a slightly smaller brush. I'm gonna use my silver black velvet size four or use any kind of smaller round brush because this painting is actually quite small and it's nice to just get in there with the details. So I won't do too much, just a little bit to make this pop. 
I have really messed up this one here. The bleed has just gone way too crazy. And this one, I'm not that happy with either. But let's see what we can do to rescue. Uh, I'm gonna make up a, a nice dark mix. I'm gonna use my Payne's Grey. Let me mix it here so you can see. My Payne's Grey, um, Dioxazine Purple, and Burnt Umber, or any other earthy color you have. Okay, so. I love this mix, it's a great combo. And then I'm just gonna go and do the dark, these little dark bits here at the bottom of this brown middle stamen. And you can even try to make the little hairs if you like that sticks out this way and that to give it that lovely texture that we see in the reference. All right, so this is my rescue mission of these loose echinacea that just didn't turn out as well as I liked. Rescue, rescue, just darken it, get in there, little strokes. Oh, already it's looking so good. Okay, that looks so good, let's do the rest. All right, so just at the bottom of each of, this, of these, darkening it with this mixture. To be honest, sometimes detailing, um, layering is not my favorite part of the painting because, you know, you gotta be, get a bit tighter, get a bit into the, the details, obviously, and it can be a bit tight. And, but, but occasionally, I find it to be quite therapeutic. So let me know in the comments, is detailing something that you enjoy doing as part of your practice? Or are you a one layer gal? I used to be a one layer gal. Um, but then I realized just a little bit of effort down here, this part, can really make a big difference. All right, not too much. Not so much that you turn, up, turn um, that you become a, a realistic painter and also not too much that you get too hung up on the tiniest details. I actually have a free PDF ebook that you can download and you just got to sign up for my mailing list um, that's on my website and I'll link it in the description below and it's a free mini ebook that um, I call the nine secrets to loose florals. And it's just a little cute book with all the tips, nine tips, nine secrets that essentially will help you land a successful loose floral painting. But it's not just about how do you paint loose floral, but also I share with you, you know, how loose floral painting using those uh, tips that I share with you can help you in so many other therapeutic ways. All right, so yeah, it's in my description. Go and get it. It's something new that I've just um, completed. I'm very proud of it. Subscribe to my mailing list. You get the link to download it straight away. All right, I am already feeling that this looks really nice. Okay, I can stop here if I like, but I will just add a few little veiny details um, to the petals. So using that same mixture, maybe adding a bit more um, purple or, or permanent rose, okay, so that it's just a little bit. So be careful here, do not smudge and place your hand over the fresh paint. So it requires a little bit of uh, balancing and see if you have been patient and just work from left to right or whichever hands you are, then you would not encounter this issue. But I got a bit impatient and Alright, so just putting lines and shadows to help just distinguish one petal from the other because it's, you know, one big muddy mess, right? Not too much, just here and there. Some parts more than the others. And this is where having a reference is really crucial and key to help you. 
So I like I want to I want to get these to a bit more pinkish. So I'm gonna go and lay some of that mm, permanent rose into some of the petals, and just careful not to overdo it. All right. Then I'm gonna do the same for these, and because these are lighter, it's gonna be even lovelier when you lay the, these veiny lines. So with watercolour, I, I have learned to just not be scared of going really, really light. Sometimes you think you're going really light, that you're just using water basically, but then when it dries, it actually has a beautiful glow to your petals or your flowers because you made it so white and because the paper can can see can shine through at the back. Yeah? Okay, there we go. Boom 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 boom. Just a few more lines. Almost getting there. Again, I feel my patience waning, but I'm telling myself, come on, Crystal, you can stick with it. This is not that much detail, all right? You can push through. Okay. All right, just some tiny, tiny lines here. Just, I love this silver black velvet because you can go really, really thin. Let's just layer some of these leaves because it looks a bit flat and what I like to do with leaves is I just going to make a darker shade of the green so you can either put blue or put some of that purple mix into the green so that it has a bit of color harmony and then just going over your leaves in some areas with either um, a line or just covering half of it and playing around with the different ways you can decorate your leaves. Really just have fun, experiment. And the thing is, because it's watercolour, you can always, if you don't like this line, it's too harsh, you can add water and then just soften it and you can spread it throughout the whole leaf, you see. That's something fun you can do. Um, yeah, so don't ever think that watercolour is not erasable because it really is. And this is also testament to the paper you're using. If you're using good quality, 100% cotton paper, it should allow you to lift the paint quite easily. There we go. All right. This one's a bit odd there. Oh, oh my God, what happened? It's okay, it's okay. Let's just make that whole leaf dark now, all right? <laughs> Rescue mission! All right, okay. All right, so, um, hang on. Maybe just a few more little details that could uh, really make this pop a little bit more. And I'm just gonna grab green, and I notice all these like little furry bits that stick out at the bottom of this bloom. I'm gonna do that there, and then maybe do a little one here. Okay, and then maybe here. And then that's it. Those are the purple echinaceas um, using this gorgeous paper that was gifted to me. If you're interested in getting this paper, I'll link it in the description below. And this turned out pretty well too, this little double, um, double brush holder thing, washer. So yeah, 
there we go. There we have it, these beautiful echinacea blooms. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll say it once more, I do have a free mini ebook um, which I call The Nine Secrets to Loose Flower Painting that I can give to you. All you need to do is just subscribe to my mailing list and the description is in my um, this description below. So just go and get it straight away. And thanks so much for watching today. I hope you have a wonderful time painting. I'll see you in the next one.